What's up, Internet World? This is The Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. Damon Auburn is back, this time with a solo project entitled The Near the Fountain, More Pure the Stream. He released that on November 12th. This is his second solo outing, comes seven years after his debut, 2014's Everyday Robots. Damon Auburn, in my opinion, definitely one of the most influential people in music in the last 30 years. You can look at what he just did with Blur alone and probably ascribe that title to him, but Gorillaz, just one of my favorite projects. I love just everything that's going on there musically, but you think about when that band debuted and what, what he was trying to do with it with the multimedia project. I think most people that were listening to Gorillaz for the first few years didn't even realize what was going on conceptually with that band. Just so innovative, whether it's the multimedia, whether it's the music, Damon Auburn, you know, 30 years into his career, still finds a way to push the envelope and keep people entertained. I'm enthralled by the man, and I'm even more entertained by the idea of a solo record just because he draws on so many different influences. The major ones, you know, the title pretty much alludes to it, The Near the Fountain, The Pier the Stream. This album is about him just looking out into his backyard. He lives in Iceland. It's the uh, Asia Mountain Range. It's a volcanic range that uh, he has a view of from his house. And, you know, in 2019, he brought in an orchestra, and he basically wanted to write music inspired by this view that he had from the landscape, from the, the wildlife, from his experiences out there. And COVID, unfortunately, put a halt on those sessions. But the foundation was laid there, and he couldn't resist. He just It was just something that he kept going back to, and I'm really glad he tapped into it because this thing is beautiful. Love the orchestration in it. It's very... I mean, I think about the bands that I know from Iceland. I mean, not very many, but Bjork, Sigur Rós, uh, you know, a lot of great orchestration in a ton of their music. So thematically, it kind of makes sense that he was working with that element on this record. And what I really love about this record is that it's really influenced by jazz, very heavily influenced by jazz. A lot of just great horn work on this record, a lot of cool just breakdowns, what feels like improvisation, elements at times that are that are very loose and they just, they just, I, I love the way they come across. There's times when they seem frantic and, you know, there's just thematically and musically so much that's going on that I feel is driven by jazz. And, you know, it's something that Damon obviously is very into, very influenced by, but I don't think I've heard a project where it's taken over so much. So I really enjoyed this record a ton for that reason. I'm also really enjoying all the heat that uh, BBC Breakfast is getting for a, uh, just that garbage interview that they did. If you have a moment, take a look at it. Apparently, Damon's haircut is more important than the beautiful music that he's making. Just more and more proof every day that the media is just, they're just idiots. But anyway, let's get into the track listing on this thing. It opens with the near the fountain, pure the stream. It's got this gentle synth intro. Really just love the way his voice comes in on the vocal. Uh, acoustic guitar, and I really just like the way this song develops into this ethereal scoundscape. It's very much... You know, like you're there with him looking out at this, you know, Icelandic pastoral before you. He really does a marvelous job of, of capturing that element and, uh, and giving you this, this opportunity to close your eyes and just envision, you know, what it is that he's seeing. It's beautifully done and it continues for, you know, another 35 minutes, five minutes on the, the big album opener. The Cormorant is your second track. It's got this hollow percussion, shakers, this, uh, you know, kind of just ambient vibe that sounds like Radiohead is doing something like a, on a Bossa Nova album. I really dug that track. Your third uh, song, Royal Morning Blue, is uh, it kicks up the temple. It's got this new wave element to it. I, this is uh, the type of track that I think uh, I was expecting more of throughout this element. Not that I'm disappointed with the record in any way, shape, or form. Uh, again, you know, alluding to the excitement of a solo project from Damon, I wasn't really sure what to expect. So this song was cool because it kind of gave me you know, uh, that, that sound of, uh, of what I was craving a bit, but then it goes into combustion and I love this song. It is just got this loose electronic jazz open, uh, opener. It's uh, just loving the style there picks up structure and then it becomes this big stomping piece and then it's brought down and it's got this piano coda. It's, uh, really just a, a marvelous example of, of the way this record moves. It's got a nice ebb and flow. There's three instrumental tracks actually on this record that, uh, that are killing it. That being one of them, uh, combustion is, uh, yeah, that fourth track for, uh, your fifth track daft waiter is, uh, you know, just Damon in the piano. And there's this, uh, swelling instrumentation that comes in and out very much is, uh, reminding me of the ocean seeking influence from that. Definitely. And there's, you know, musics of, uh, you know, traditional elements of, of Irish and English music as well that are, that are driving the song. It's very subtle. It's very nuanced, 
but I dug that track for this reason. Darkness to Light is your sixth song. It is uh, another example of just this great jazz influence. This song is funky, but it's got this nice, just groovy, slow tempo. Um, leads into uh, Asia, which is your second instrumental track. Again, a reference to that volcanic mountain range. The Tower of Montevideo. Got more of that bossa nova flair on this record. There's quite a bit of that as well. And I love the sound. I love the vibe. It's very relaxed, very laid back. Certainly works with everything else that is going on on this record. Giraffe Trumpet C is a, a, a pretty interesting little track there. Um, leads into Polaris. Love, um, love this penultimate track. The uh, Giraffe Trumpet C is a, an instrumental track. And the jazz outro on that leads into Polaris. So it, it has that open. And then you know it turns into this like bright, upbeat song. It's got this a uh, little bit of cowbell, great organ and synth elements to it. Uh, definitely my favorite track on this record. A lot of a lot of stuff that you'll probably be familiar with as far as you know Damon's catalog and, and the way he works and the way he writes. But I, I I'm definitely loving the hell out of that track. And then it leads into Particles, your your last track. And this is definitely this song feels like more familiar territory for Damon. It's uh, it's certainly uh, ambient and a great way to to close this record out. But loving this project, I love the way that he really is channeling the energy of the landscape around him does a marvelous job. I, uh, I recommend it. You know, I'm going to vinyl please this and say, close your eyes and just think of Iceland. Think of all those beautiful volcanoes, all the pictures that you may have seen. And if you haven't, you know, just look a few up and then close your eyes and listen to this record. Cause I think it'll serve you just as well. It's a beautiful place. Hope I have the opportunity to go there. I hope you have an opportunity to listen to this record. Hope you find this review helpful. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel, do all the things to help me grow this project and stay tuned throughout the week for more album reviews. We'll see you next time on the beat sessions.